Greeting shippers, welcome back. And it's time to take a look at yet another popular trope. One that is ongoing, evolving, and seems to be near ubiquitous in some cases, or at least appears across many, many fandoms. With this trope, it is most likely that fans have encountered it, even if they haven't explored it. We're talking about the coffee shop AU. The fandom phenomenon wherein characters are somehow placed into a coffee shop environment. Somehow characters will find themselves running, working at or frequenting a coffee shop. There is more here than meets the eye. But before we get started, if you haven't already, please do follow on social media to stay up to date, know when we're streaming, and we've had some fun streams of late. And of course, just to come on over and chit chat about fandom. It's a good time, I swear. Also, this is not the first trope we have discussed. We've done other big tropes like Hanahaki disease and wing fic. If you're interested in checking those out, I'll have the playlist with all of our tropes down below. And of course, over there, click the card. Now, whether you love coffee or not, let's take a look at the coffee shop AU. Or tea shop. Yes, this is tea. It is not necessary to love coffee or even to like it to find oneself falling into the coffee shop AU. This AU has been around for quite some time in modern fandom terms, with discussion musing over the popularity of coffee shops in fandom and fiction appearing as early as the 80s. Though the rationale behind it that was decided upon was not overly favorable. The consensus for a time was that the coffee shop in fiction, fandom or otherwise, was a way to mask writer's block or a gap in one's creativity as the concept was simple and imagery and sentiment could be easily evoked due to many cultures, various relationships with coffee shops. Indeed, the popularity of the coffee shop as a meeting place that attracts a certain sort of individual is often attributed to millennials or Tumblr culture, but is in actuality much older, with a fascination with coffee houses going as far back as beatnik culture. And that is just within recent cultural memory, as it really extends much further back and has a long, rich history all its own. This goes even further still if one includes cafes that serve coffee, which have long been renowned for their relaxing, romantic, or sophisticated atmospheres, even when found in the dingiest of places, aka the hole in the wall. So at least culturally, the coffee shop's placement as a meeting place and social hub was firmly entrenched, but it took a while for the coffee shop AU as a genre to take firm root in fandom and grow to what it is today. The spread of the coffee shop AU into common fandom usage can be traced back to 2001 and an RPF fic in the InSync fandom called Café de l'Amour by InSync Girl, which even included an author's note on her website after the fic and trope soared into popularity, which read, it started a trend, don't you think? Though most likely not the first coffee shop AU, it was the first one of such widespread popularity. And and one that served to set the tone and format. If one wishes to peruse this fic or its contents, it has alas been purged from the net by the author herself, as it was hosted along with all her other boy band fiction on an Angel Fire site, going by the name Forever. The reason for the deletion lies in the author having reworked and turned many of her fics into original novels. During this time, she directly stated that readers would not be allowed to repost her work, as to do so would put them in violation of her copyright, though she has left some of her fics online in PDF form on her site when there's no more forever. So the original fic no longer exists. However, the reworking of the story, also going by the same name, is up on the author's website, J.M. Snyder Press, where the author houses her published works under the tagline, Musings of a Small Press Publisher and Author of Gay Smut. So if one wishes, they can check out that story. However, how similar or dissimilar it is from the original fic is something known to those who had the pleasure of reading the original. Regardless of the seeming originator of the trope's popularity during the digital fandom renaissance not being present, the effects are easy to trace. Like many fandom concepts, fans of the trope took it with them as they traveled through fandoms. For many, some would argue most, fans are involved in more than one fandom. So the concept moved quickly from RPF and fandom into more traditional and accepted fandoms. And as it did so, particularities about it began to arise, such as which characters would find themselves in a coffee shop, which would often transcend the genre of the fandom. Fans would tend to place characters with either a voracious and well-known love of coffee into this new setting, or a character who is perpetually stressed and could perhaps benefit from the relaxing and friendly environment invoked by the coffee shops in these fics. In one fandom, these two requirements came together in a perfect storm. That was the character of Rodney McKay in Stargate Atlantis. This coffee-guzzling, perpetually nervous scientist became a lightning rod for this AU, and as a result, 
and so too did the Stargate fandom. A fandom doing quite well in its own right, thanks to the popularity of its originator, Stargate SG-1, which had transferred many of its fans as well as new ones to its spin-off sister series. Here, multiple forms of the AU began to assert themselves. As mentioned during an episode of Fic Rec Friday, where a mixed coffee shop AU was referenced, the Fic could find a way to make the coffee shop work in the actual universe's canon by potentially introducing the concept of ownership, which began to balloon into the sister trope, the Cafe AU. It must be noted that this trope's name was not originally a coffee shop AU, but instead the Barista AU. At some point, as this trope became more and more popular, the name shifted. This may have had something to do with the evolving nature of the trope's narrative. There was also the AU wherein the entirety of the cast of characters worked at a coffee shop, transforming the entire SGC into a coffee shop, similar to the Deep Dish 9 headcanon we have previously discussed, wherein Deep Space 9 is reimagined as a pizza shop. These fics played with format, as to pairings and romance as well. While many tended to be McShep, as that was and still is Atlantis's dominant pairing, what was more in flux was whether both were employees of the coffee shop, employee and owner, or employee or owner and customer. Some consider two customers falling in love at the coffee shop to be a subset of this genre. While all working around the same theme, variants began to emerge as fans came to realize that the coffee shop could straddle the line of familiarity and creativity, as one could tweak the trope while still presenting the fluff the AU was becoming well known for. That is not to say the evolution of the coffee shop AU was drama free. Indeed, one fandom incident has managed to be remembered and documented, despite how many early fandom skirmishes and wars were lost to time, due to a shift in archiving and also a different attitude about fandom in general. Indeed, outside of ship wars and flame wars, incidents surrounding individual works were often referred to as fandom wank. Rather than the masturbatory use of the term wank, in this case, it meant generally distasteful fandom behavior that occurs loudly and in a forum where many can see it. These instances were very much looked down upon, as the general view was that they reflected poorly on fandom and fans, rather than them simply being a natural course of action of the landscape, which tends to be the mindset at the time of this recording. However, it was then and still is considered poor form to attack fandom creators. Wank has since fallen out of favor as a term, as some came to feel it was often misapplied and used to attack people who were attempting to have serious discussions about trends within fandom that they took issue with. In this case, the Wank incident surrounded a Stargate Atlantis fic by the name of Buffalo Wings, written by Ohm Glaude Dork in 2007, an AU that placed the cast as both characters and workers in a coffee shop, with some retaining their original occupations, though not for the SGC, while others were given new occupations within the coffee shop itself, which was where the backlash arose. Ronan, portrayed by Jason Momoa, and one of the few characters of color on the show, worked as a waiter, while the others were scientists or pilots, etc., as they had been before. This led to accusations of racism against the author, and against those who enjoyed the fic, which was decently popular, amassing over 200 comments. The argument was that, in general, Ronan and Taylor tended to be placed in subordinate roles to the other characters within this particular AU, with this fic serving as a specific example, and that this casting, as it was referred to, reflected the fandom's inherent racist bias, while others argued that the casting of Taylor and Ronan as waiters made sense, as unlike the SGC workers, these two's roles tended to be that of warrior or liaisons to alien cultures, something not needed in the coffee shop. And not all early AU authors were as comfortable completely throwing off all the characters' origins to give them brand new professions. Hence, making them waiters was the best way to maintain universe integrity, and people were creating an issue of hierarchy when there was none. Some griped at the description of waiters and baristas as subordinate. All of this is a fascinating early example of exchanges that have now become commonplace in a phenomenon labeled by many as outrage culture, while others feel it is a rise in an era of critique. Regardless of how one feels, the coffee Coffee Shop AU as a whole was in no way harmed by this incident. How it impacted Coffee Shop AUs in the Atlantis fandom is a bit more difficult to track, as Coffee Shop AUs tended to be very popular on LiveJournal, and it's hard to tell how many original works remain on fanfiction.net, and as indicated by the InSync Girl example, many independent archives are no more. The Coffee Shop AU becomes much easier to track again with the rise of AO3, aka an archive of our own, which also allows for the tagging of not only this AU, but its split off such as cafe or tea shop AUs, for those who are not a fan of coffee. The coffee shop continues to go strong, with new work still being produced. But regardless of history, some still have the question of why. Why the coffee shop AU? What is the appeal? Well, as mentioned by earlier outlooks, it is an easier trope to work with, but that doesn't have to be a bad thing. Most are familiar with the environment of a coffee shop, both in actuality and the idealized version many wish it was. While some have a natural affinity for the coffee shop and enjoy spending time there, and even writing there, 
there. For many, the coffee shop is a fantasy. A fantasy of good company, easy interactions, and good beverages. With these base tenants, it can be an appealing setting for a wide array of characters. And as time has gone on, they need not love coffee or be stressed to participate. That still helps ease the transition, but with the rise of more and more headcanons that completely split off from canon, or feel free to add small character traits, such as a love of coffee, to a character, the trope is more accessible than ever. It has also developed an appeal for both younger fans and fandoms, that being fandoms with younger characters or younger fans, though of course it has an appeal for all ages. There is also the tone. Most coffee shop AUs tend to be fluffy and romantic, oftentimes even slow burn, and as such, many have an overall romantic atmosphere. Even in the way the scenes and descriptions are written, many coffee shop AUs are simply infused with a yearning, even for activities that many would deem mundane. This causes many fics to have lots of time for participants to get to know each other, as the setting does not lend itself as well to casual hookups, though this can be worked around. However, contrary to popular belief, not all coffee shop fics are fluffy. While in the minority, there are angsty coffee shop AUs, as well as ones of unrequited love. One has to search hard for truly dark fics, something that can turn people who prefer darker fare off of this trope. Though as demand increases and genres and tropes bleed into one another, dark coffee house fics may have their day. There is often the assumption that the coffee house fic is simple, but not in the sense of the synonym easy, rather in the sense of the synonym vapid. Namely, some feel that these fics don't have much to offer, certainly not as much as more intricate AUs or elaborations slash extrapolations upon actual canon. On this, mileage varies, as it depends upon how one looks at it. In its base form, the coffee shop could be seen to become repetitive, not only in how often it occurs, but in the fact that the plots may seem to become formulaic. However, while this may be a deterrent for some, for others it may be a drawing factor. The story's foundation can provide assurance of what kind of story the reader is most likely in for, and the intrigue comes from seeing exactly how the characters are placed within the environment, and how the coffee shop is utilized, i.e. who takes on what role, or how much of an AU the story is, rather than from the complexity of the trope itself. Like ABO, which we have also discussed, the coffee shop AU is a world unto itself. It is simply a much smaller one, and more likely to follow certain formats. To some, a negative. To others, a near promise of a relaxing time for reader and writer, delivering upon what each are looking for. As coffee shop AUs are often requested in prompts, by commission, and just in general fandom musing. As time has gone on, they have not remained isolated either. The coffee shop AU, due to its relative simplicity vis-a-vis -vis other more elaborate tropes, can find itself paired off with other common fandom tropes. For example, coffee shop plus college slash university AU, coffee shop plus bookstore or bakery AU, or plus stripper AU. A very common one, especially if the genre the ficker work is coming from is fantasy, sci-fi, or period piece, is the modern AU, a juggernaut of a trope in its own right. In short, the coffee shop AU is versatile, which is also part of its appeal. Its accessibility allows it to be molded in ways that are still being explored, as the coffee shop is as ever adapting to more and more fic trends, be they new and emerging tropes, or the explosion of diverse headcanons occurring in fandom in the late 2010s, and potentially beyond. Though some would argue that perhaps there is not that great a depth of reason for this trope's appeal, that people are simply attempting to assign grander meaning to it than is actually there, and that what may have occurred is simply a perfect storm of timing and imagery, allowing the trope to flourish to near universality. And now that this has occurred, fans look on perplexed, wondering how such an uncomplicated concept could be so loved, even amongst those with no particular affinity for coffee or the coffee house atmosphere. Now the coffee shop AU is of course not universally loved. We have touched upon a few reasons, the formulaic nature and the tendency towards fluff, but those are not the only reasons. If one is not fond of AUs, this one could either be a gateway or a hindrance, especially as these appear across genres, such as sci-fi and superhero fics. For some, this simply alters what they enjoy about the original source too much, and by placing the characters in roles of, for example, barista and customer, it removes the uniqueness of the traits they enjoyed about them, rendering them mundane, or the situation too close to what one could actually live, hence removing some of the escape or fantasy element for certain fans. Some feel that the romanticization of the coffee shop is a misstep, and that it feeds into the snobbery and elitism that seems to surround coffee shop culture, which some find unappealing, a link that often in the modern era, particularly the 2010s onward at the time of this recording, loops back to Tumblr. For some, coffee shop culture is synonymous with Tumblr culture, and Tumblr does not have the best reputation online when it comes to curating fan content and fan communities, particularly from those on the outside looking 
in. On the inside, mileage varies. The built-in realism or near realism of the coffee shop AU causes some fans to ponder more social questions, as evidenced by the 2007 incident surrounding buffalo wings. These can occur surrounding specific fix, as they did then, and still do now. Or it can be about the workplace dynamics, aka power dynamics some feel are innately at play when it comes to questions of employee-customer relationships, but particularly owner-employee, or employee-to-employee. -employee. While some feel that these can be worked through, or are not that serious, or even do not need to be considered due to the fantasy element present in a majority of fanfics, even ones as reminiscent of real-world potentialities as the coffee shop at you. Some simply feel it is silly, and feel that there is nothing interesting or romantic about standing in a long line to get in many cases an overpriced drink in a coffee shop one probably won't be able to sit in because there are people on laptops that have been there for hours, and will be for several more. Baristas also have unique takes on these fix, some loving them, others not so much. Like with all tropes, it is not for everyone. The Coffee Shop AU is more intriguing than its name would suggest, and capable of more than many assume. It is also not likely to vanish anytime soon. The ease with which it can travel from fandom to fandom, and the way it can draw in any character should a creator so choose, make its status as a relevant trope a lasting one. While it may wax and wane in popularity, like Time Travel or Mpreg or Wingfic, just to name a few, it will be represented. Most fans entering any fandom will encounter this trope, and if one lingers in fandom long enough, they will probably check one out. How they will come to feel about it is another matter. Are you a fan of coffee shop AUs? If you've ever worked at a coffee shop, has that altered how you feel about this AU? Do you have a favorite trope? Let me know the answer to this and anything else you feel like letting me know down below. And you know, number your answers if possible. I love a good essay comment. Let me know if there are any other tropes you want to take a look at. It is always a fascinating journey. Thank you as always for taking some time out of your day to spend it discussing fandom with me. I always appreciate it. There are as always more videos coming soon, so if you haven't already, please do subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you never miss a vid. I will see you all again soon, and until then, let's get to that outro. Bye-bye. This has been Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Special thanks to all of my patrons' names on the side for helping to make these videos possible. There are, as always, more videos coming soon, so until then, stay tuned for there are as many ships out there as there are stars in the sky.